Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And he is so worthy, and he is so worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. Every day is a day to thank him and praise him for what he has done and what he is doing. Some of y'all right now today can't even imagine how far you don't came without Jesus. Think about all the trouble that you caused, and you wonder how you got out of it. It was Jesus. Some of y'all put yourself in certain situations, in certain circumstances, and you don't know how. You don't know how it was going to happen. But then Jesus make a way, even though it was your fault. Then he wake you up today. Then he breathe life inside of you today. Then he make sure that the blood was flowing through your body today. Then he give you another chance and another opportunity today. Yes, he did. So if he did all of that, because a lot of people didn't make it today. But if he done it for you, my sisters, if he done it for you, my brothers, automatically you should have been giving him thanks, praise, and glory. Because Jesus is your everything. Jesus is your first love. Nothing should ever come before him. I mean nothing at all. He is your Lord and Savior Christ. Praise is the everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. Yes, he do. And his grace is so sufficient. Yes, it is. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home or into your life, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today, please do so. Please return back to your first love because he is your everything. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Giving y'all thanks, giving y'all praise, giving y'all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do right now. We thank you, Father God, how you've lined things up in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you order our steps. We thank you, Father God, for your guidance and your direction. We thank you, Father God, for your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding, Father God, that you give us, Father God, when we ask for it. We thank you, Father God, for the blessing that we're going to receive this year. We thank you, Father God, for the breakthrough that we're going to receive this year. We thank you, Father God, for the miracle that we're going to receive this year. We thank you, Father God, for the fresh new anointing, Father God, that you bless, you bless with us today. We thank you, Father God, how you continue to overflow our cup, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love. We thank you, Father God, for your patience. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you do for us, everything that you ever done. We thank you, Father God, how you work behind the scenes for us right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father God for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now that's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Heavenly Father God, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, giving you all the thanks, giving you all the praise, and giving you all the glory. We magnify your name right now today, Jesus, in this place right now. We worship you right now today, Jesus, in this place right now today, Jesus. We magnify your name right now today, Father God, because you are everything, Father God. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your your presence to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place. I believe and I declare right now today, Father God, that you're about to show up, that I know for a fact that you're about to show out. Someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready. <laughs> Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Father God. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now. And you will and you shall get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. 
Heavenly Father, all but Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to touch my brothers and sisters right now. Uplift their spirit right now today, Father God. Talk to their heart right now today, Father God. Open their eyes so they can see whatever it is they need to see from you right now today. Open their ears so they can hear whatever it is they need to hear from you right now today. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my brothers and my sisters' life right now today. I'm asking you, Father God, for a favor for my brothers and sisters right now today. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to move supernaturally in my brothers and my sisters' life right now today. I'm asking you, Father God, to restore everything to my brothers and sisters. What the enemy have taken, what the enemy have stolen right now. I'm praying, I'm believing, Father God, that you open up a door for my brothers and sisters right now. I'm praying, I'm standing on, I'm standing on faith, Father God, for a blessing for my brothers and sisters, for a breakthrough for my brothers and sisters, for a miracle for my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father God, it's not too hard for you. It's not too difficult for you, Father God. I'm claiming it right now. I receive it right now because I know that it's done right now today, Father God. And you will and you should get all the thanks, all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now. Right here in this sanctuary. Right here on this YouTube channel. Right here on this platform. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are comforter. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now today so we hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to enlighten us right now. I'm asking you to move, move through us. I'm asking you right now today, Holy Spirit, to move through us like you never moved before so we catch the Holy Ghost fire right now today. Holy Spirit, please forgive us for grief you right now today. As we repent of our sins right now today, Father God, please forgive us for our sin today. Known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now today. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to always pray praise and have fellowship with all my brothers and sisters today, Father God. Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for service, I'm available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm at, that's why I have a hunger, that's why I have a thirst for you, Jesus, because I want more and I want more of you, Jesus. That's why I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. I'm just going to keep it real. And I'm going to be honest. I don't know who y'all are listening to, but y'all are going to stop lying on, lying on God, saying God told you this and God told you that. You are hearing the wrong voice. You hearing a voice, but I don't think it's God's voice. Because if it was God's voice, why in the world are you being disobedient then? If God told you that. If it was God's voice, why are you not listening to his commands or degrees? If God told you something, if God is telling you something, why are you not sitting still and waiting on his instructions? If God told you this and God told you that, why are you being so mannish? Why are you being hard headed Why are you not listening? I don't think God told you anything. I believe you heard a voice, but I don't think it came from God. But if it did come from God, you got destroyed by the other voice, and you got blindsided. But I'm just telling you one thing. If God told you something, you're going to listen to what God says. I'm tired of people, oh, God told me this. God told me that. If God told me that you were the right man or the right woman, why in the way did you leave my sisters? 
Why you need that relationship? God told that was the right man. Why you deceive that man? Why you use that man? Why you cheat on that man? If God told you that, if God told you he was the right one, why would you? Why would you entertain other guys? Was it God told you that, or was another voice told you that? Or God told you that, but the enemy came in and said something too, and you went with the other voice. My brothers, the same thing. God told me you was the right woman. God told me that was the right woman. Why you play her like that? Why you break her heart like that? Why you why you ain't throw away your players card when you should have been throwing it away a long time ago? If God told you something, why you why you abandoning that friend that was there for you? If God told you something, why you leave that job? If God told you something, why did you do the opposite? Somebody gotta tell me something. If God told you something, why in the world did you do the opposite? It don't make sense. Somebody got to let it make sense right now. Because a lot of y'all right now, you've been lying on God for a long time. But it got to make sense right now. We got to clear it up right now today. And you know exactly who I'm talking to right now today. Ain't no need to chicken coat because I hear it all the time. God told me this. God told me that the whole time. You doing something totally different what God told you. So if God told you something, why in the world did you do something different? It ain't adding up, my sisters. It ain't adding up, my brothers. It's really not. I'm just going to keep it real. I know y'all listen to the wrong voice. I believe you're hearing it, but I don't think you're hearing it from God. But God, because when God tells you something, his voice is smooth. It's soft. When he tells you something, he also reveals it. So you know that it's coming from him. He'll let you know. Anytime when God tells somebody something, you listen to what God says because God can't change his mind on what he told you. God don't make no mistakes on what he brought together. But the main thing, the main thing that he does not do, absolutely does not do, you do it, my brothers, you do it, my sisters, and your father do it, which is the devil. God does not lie whatsoever. Point blank period. So you, so, so you mean to tell me when God told you something and you did the opposite, you trying to tell me that God lied? You mean to tell me that God made a mistake? You mean to tell me that God didn't, God didn't really mean that? God really didn't want you to have this person? Oh, come on now. Somebody got to let it make sense. If God told you something, why in the world did you do the different when the word of God said he does not make no mistakes? He don't lie. So somebody lied. Somebody made a mistake. So who was it? It couldn't have been God. So I, oh, I know who it is. It was you then, right? If I know it wasn't God, so you heard the wrong voice then, right? Well, come on now. Somebody got to let it make sense. It ain't adding up here. Because when God tell you to do something, he don't make no mistakes at all. If he speak to you, that means he is telling you something. If he's showing you something in a dream and a vision, that means it's going to come to pass. He don't lie at all. Men lie, women lie, and the devil lie. So somebody is not accurate on what's actually going on. Someone's not accurate, really not telling the truth what's really happening on in this matter. Somebody lied. So who is it? I know for a fact God don't lie. I know that for a fact. So if I know God don't lie, I guess it's you that made this story up. I guess you heard the wrong voice. I guess that you were listening to things. That's really what it was, right? Let's be honest about it. Because y'all lying on God too much now. We got to put a stop to that. And if he is telling you something, why are you doing the opposite? If he is telling you something, why are you being disobedient? If he is telling you something, why are you not listening to what he's telling you? It don't add up. It don't make sense. Now it does You need to open your eyes and see what God's trying to show you. You need to open your ears so you really can hear his voice. Because God don't lie. And God sure don't make no mistakes at all. Period. You made a mistake. You made the wrong decision. And you were hearing the wrong voice. You were hearing things. I'm going to keep it real with you. You were hearing things. How I know? I'm glad you asked me. Let's turn up to Numbers 23. 
got your Bibles open. Numbers 23, and we're going to read verses 19. Then we're going to go to Psalms 105, and we're going to read verse 15. That's Psalms 23, and we're going to read verse 19. If you have it, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. God is not a man, listen to this, that he should not lie. Point blank period. God is not a man that he should not lie. Why is not a man? Because God is a spirit, a faithful spirit, a loving spirit, a kind spirit, an amazing spirit, an uplifting spirit. He can't lie. You can lie, my sisters. You can lie, my brothers. And we know the devil can lie. So why y'all lying on God said God to told y'all something, but you did something different? Why are you saying God told you something and you did the opposite? The words say he should not lie. So if he can't lie, so who lying? If God can't lie, so who is lying then? Come on now. Nor a son of man that what he should would not change his mind. He can't even change his mind on something. If he told you, my brothers, that I want you to go to that door, that's the right door, he can't change his mind about that door. If he told you that was the right job, that means he knows something about that job. If he told you that was the right friend, that was the right friend. If he told you to go east, he wants you to go east. If he told you that was the right woman, that was the right woman. My sister, if he told you that was the right man right there that he picked out for you, that was the right man. If he told you that you need to go north, you should have went north. If he told you, if he told you that you should have started your business, why you didn't do it? He can't change his mind on that. He didn't lie to you, and he did change his mind. So if he didn't, if he can't lie, and if he didn't change his mind, and if he don't make mistakes, who lied? Who changed their mind? Who made a mistake? It can't be God. It can't be him because the word says so right here. I'm going exactly what the word is saying. And the word has to be what? Fulfilled. So if the word has to be fulfilled, that means he can't lie. That means he can't change his mind about something. And he don't make no mistakes. You made a mistake. You made the wrong decision. But I can tell you one thing. You were hearing the wrong voice. You hear it all the time. God told me this. God told me that. And next thing you know, you don't did something totally different. God didn't change his mind about what he started in your life. God didn't change his mind about that door that he opened for you. God didn't change his mind about that friend. God didn't change his mind about that woman. God didn't change his mind about that man. God didn't change his mind. God did not change his mind about that business opportunity. He didn't change his mind about that dream that he gave you. And he sure didn't change his mind about that vision he gave you. He didn't change his mind at all. He didn't change his mind what he started in your life. He didn't change his mind. You might have changed your mind. You might have made a mistake. You might have lied, but it wasn't God. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. You're hearing the wrong voice. Let's turn our Bible to Psalms 105. And we're going to read verse 15. Psalms 105. And we're going to read verse 15. And if you have it, say, I have it. Glory be to God. They bruised his feet was shackles. His neck was put in arms to what he foretold. Listen at this. Until what he foretold came to what it came to pass until the word of the Lord proved him true. What he told you. If God told you something, won't you listen at this? Because I'm tired of y'all lying on God a lot. Right now I got to defend God. I'm going to defend him because he got my back. So right now, I got his back right now. If God told you something, because we know he don't lie, we know he don't make no mistakes, and we know he don't change his mind at all. If God told you something, he showed you something, he delivered you something, the word of God said it will come to what pass until the word of the Lord has proved him true. So God always going to prove you right. So if God going to prove you right, and what he's told you, if you said that he told you something, that means it got to come to pass. That means it's going to come to light. That means it's going to be right. It's going to be true. So why in the world did you do something opposite? Come on now. Now we read Numbers and we read Psalms. And you read both, both verses. 
You listen to both texts, what the word of God says. What he foretold you will come to pass. What he showed you will come to pass. That dream that he gave you will come to pass. That vision that he's been showing you will come to pass. When he puts you at the right place at the right time, it will come to pass. That blessing, when he blessed you with my sister and brother, he never told you what it's going to look like till your blessing might come empty. But he never told you what's inside of the blessing. He said, this is the right man for you right here, my sisters. You might not look like he's the right man, but this is the right man right here. Why in the way did you do? Why in the way did you jump ship? Why in the world would you entertain the other guys? Why in the world did you leave him to go be with somebody else? But in the beginning, was the first thing you said, oh, God told me he was the one. A couple of days later, a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later, oh, it's something totally different. Oh, God told me she was the right woman. A couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months later, oh, it's something totally different. God told me he was the right friend a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months later. It's something different. God told me it was the right job a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. It's something different. Somebody was lying. And we know it ain't God. So who is it? It's the point I'm making right now today. I'm going to be honest with you. I believe you were hearing the wrong thing. Because God told you something. You'll learn how to sit your tail down and you wait on him. Because his words say, what he foretold will come to pass. Mm. Till the word of the Lord proved him true. God always going to prove himself right because he can't lie. He can't make nothing up. You can make something up, my sisters. You can make something up, my brothers. But God can't make anything up. He can't tell a fairy tale. He can't tell a lie. He can't tell a fear. But you can. He can't change his mind, but you can. He don't make no mistakes, but you can. So I'm just going to keep it real with you. Stop saying that God told you something and you end up doing something opposite of what God supposedly told you. So who told you what? Because God told you something, that means he's standing on his words. God always going to stand on his words no matter what. If you can't stand on your word, God always going to stand on his word because he can't lie about his word. He can't make it up. He can't change his mind either. But you did it. So did God really tell you? Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. I just believe that you will listen to the wrong thing. I believe that you will listen to the wrong voice. I don't know who I'm talking to right now today. I don't know who this word is for today. But if God told you something, sit still. He can't lie about what he told you. He can't change his mind what he told you. He don't make no mistakes. Everything he told you, everything he showed you, everything he has, he has been helping you with will come to pass. Because why? His word is true. His word is bond. He can't do what you do. You playing jumping jacks. He keeping it real. But are you? Learn how to hear God's voice. And stop listening to that junk. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I know this word for somebody. And if you know this word is for you, go and hit Jesus like button. Go and hit the subscribe button to us well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. But I was praying that simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he's the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving me to say to you. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy name.